Welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Look at this 2008 Pala that came in today. The north one is up in here and a broken sway bar. Let me show you how to fix that. Right here on the driver's side, it's really common to see these uh, sway bars break. I think it's because they're hollow. I don't know if they get water in them and rust from the inside out, but not uncommon to see them come in, you know, crack, crack right in half there and the ends busted off them. You can see on the passenger side that's still in pretty good shape. No cracks or splits, but one side's broke, so we gotta change the whole thing. First thing you gotta do to start is just unhook the actual sway bar link itself. Um, I don't the new kit comes with links, I just take the torch and I'm just gonna blast the heads off the bottom of them, and then I'll just pull the whole whole shank right up out of there, so no big deal. But uh, if you don't have a torch, you know you can use a cutoff wheel or you can use it, you know, it looks like a 13 millimeter, then hold the bolt up top and just buzz that apart. Gonna support the rear half of the frame here. Gonna buzz the two uh, subframe bolts out. Hopefully, let this down enough to get to the uh, brackets. I suppose if you're doing it at home and you had, you know, had your jack stands under here or on the pinch welds or whatever, you could just do this part with the floor jack. You don't have them down quite a ways, you know. Enough to get up in there and get the, get the sway bar loose and you gotta have yourself enough room to get it out the back. At least that's how I take them out. There might be a, there might be a better way or the right way, but this is how I've always done them. I don't hook anything up front, just leave the engine and everything hooked up. Just, Lower it down. I mean, you don't have to worry about your steering shaft come disconnected or anything. Um, you lower it down about about this far. I don't know, three and a half, four inches, anyways. And um, pull your insulators off. And now you've got plenty of room to work. So what we're after is these, you know, little saddles that hold the sway bar on. We'll just uh, stick a 13 mil on there. Get them cracked loose. To get them cracked loose, so it just buzz up in here with an air ratchet. But got to take both these off, uh, both sides, obviously, and slide it out. It's a pretty easy job. the new sway bar comes with everything here links bushings brackets the whole bit
it's just a matter of removing the bar. Just like I say, if I remember right, they do come out the back, but I'm have to pop these off here. Just a bracket and the bushings there. There we go. That's all there is to it. That's what the bracket and the bushing looks like. Really a pretty simple job. There's the um, broken side there. Now if we took and torched this off up here, uh, you would see that uh, this end of the sway bar would actually just fall off in, in two pieces. I've seen guys weld these, but I don't know. Like I say, they're hollow for whatever reason. So that's that. Let's take our new sway bar. Stick it up in there. This one is marked, so it's driver side, this side down. If the sway bar you get is not marked, you know, make sure that you uh, compare it to the old one. And I'm just going to take and stick our bushings on here. Before I do, I'm just going to spray them with fluid film. It won't, uh, it won't hurt the rubber on the bushings or anything, but it makes them a lot easier to to slide around, where, so we can get them where we need them. There's a little groove on top of the subframe that the sway bar bushings sit into. You'll see on the bottom of the bushing they've got a, you know, a corresponding groove that they'll sit down into. Like I said, I just spray them a little bit with some fluid film. Probably use any kind of rubber safe grease like uh, silicone I imagine. Silicone spray, something like that, or brake caliper grease or something that's not going to affect, affect rubber. Like I said, the kit I bought comes with new saddles. I'll spray those too, just to kind of make the job easier. Skip them right over. What I'll do is I'll get the, uh, comes with new bolts too. So we'll get those started. Just do the same thing on the other side. Gonna go through and start snugging them up. I don't want to get them too tight yet. I still gotta put my links on, but just run the bolts in a little bit here. Take the new links, They're just like the factory ones. And get those stuck in there. So we'll take our bushings, spacer, stick them in the middle. Kind of shove that up through. Get these started before we tighten the sway bar down all the way. Let's do the same thing on the uh, passenger side. Basically now that everything's started, you can see this sway bar over here is tipping in quite a bit. This one's pretty much vertical. I'm just going to move the bar over just slightly, kind of get things evened up here. 
make them look even. Obviously, when we stick the frame up, they you know they they turn and tweak just a little bit. But we're just get them uh, get them so they look exactly the same. And gonna go ahead and tighten up the sway bar now. And we'll tighten up our links. We'll tighten up the sway bar. We'll push our uh, frame back up, and then we'll tighten up the links, and we're done. I just like double check them with a wrench just to be sure they're they're snug. Okay, that's good. Well, like I said, I just gotta push the put the frame back up where it belongs. That way there our control arms are hanging where they belong. I suppose if you weren't careful with the, you know, letting this frame member down, you could separate the steering joint and probably yank some wires apart and cause all kinds of issues, but it's got to kind of use some common sense there. What I'll do now, I'll just reach up over the top here with the 13 mil, kind of start snugging these up. This is where those uh, top tool offset wrenches I told you guys about, that's where they really excel because it's kind of nice. You can reach up over a, uh, you know, reach up over an axle like this. It's kind of hook right on that, gives you lots of room. Usually on these style sway bars, usually what I do is I just tighten them down to the rubber start uh, start to smush. They'll be about the same diameter as their washers. And that's pretty much it. Well, that's it. Not much of a job. Uh, I know it's kind of a short video compared to what we usually do, but I know these sway bars are super common on these things to break, at least in our climate. So I don't know if it is just, uh, uh, you know, geographically specific to the to the rust belt, but it seems uh, more often than not when we see these cars and Buicks and you know a whole host of GM cars that use this hollow sway bar, we see these things broke all the time. And like I say, you get the car in just for a normal PM and and find out that it's broke. Usually, the customer will just have you throw it on. Parts store usually stocks these uh, sway bar links or sway bar and link kits right in stock so it's usually not a problem getting our hands on one and and you can see it only takes just a a little bit of time to throw it in there and uh make everybody happy <laughs> so so thanks for watching check us out on facebook if you haven't already we're also on google plus if you want to connect with us socially there if you haven't subscribed to our channel i just ask that you consider it that way you can stay up to date with our latest publications that roll out weekly and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching